Okay, this is without a doubt the worst camera I have ever owned, but I'm actually really excited to talk about it. It's the Pixie camera and it comes from a manufacturer in France. I first came across this camera after a friend listened to a recent episode of my podcast, recommended I check out at least what was available in the marketing um, on the website. They have a fantastic looking website, very, very minimalist, very Apple-esque in their marketing and branding. I would say this company is trying to hit that sweet spot between uh, sort of Leica and Apple style branding. And they definitely do that in the overall layout aesthetically, just the overall workflow and, and sort of just the, the ethos in general. So as I started to dive further and further into uh, what this company was about, somewhere buried in their website, I came across uh, some information about their founder and some of the other people that work for them. So I believe the individual that's kind of driving the core uh, software and experience of this camera is somebody by the name of David Barth, who I think has a background working with Ubuntu or Unix or some programming. Uh, at the end of the day, I was fascinated by this slide right here the smartphone revelation. So one of my issues with the vast majority of cameras that are out there, uh, other than smartphone cameras themselves, are that, you know, the Sony mirrorless, the Canon mirrorless, Nikon mirrorless, they don't presume the presence of the smartphone at all times. They wanna be able to operate and do literally everything you can need in the camera as a complete standalone product. This is an approach that I don't think is uh, very forward thinking or uh, really applicable to how the world is obviously changing and evolving, um, especially in the last decade. The Pixie may makes it very clear from the outset that this camera will operate as a core functioning uh, st you know, still camera just fine, but they've even went as far as to, to remove the digital screen from the back. So you literally can't even review your images uh, with this thing. The only way to do that is to pop open the app on your phone and start playing around there. So I was very intrigued by this concept and uh, having shot Leica for many years, you can check out a lot of my reviews over on my website whenever you want. Uh, the Leica M8, M9, M8, MP, kind of the full spectrum of what Leica rangefinders, uh, digital rangefinders have to offer. I was very intrigued with this because I have, this This camera is M mount, so it only supports the Leica M mount. It is actually a crop sensor camera, which was really a surprise to me given the price point of this thing at 2,900 euros. It's very expensive, uh, especially for a crop sensor with, with no screen on the back. That's pretty intense. <clears throat> and as soon as it uh, arrived, you know, I opened it out, I think I tore the box apart. I don't even have it to show this isn't technically meant to be an unboxing, but I popped my 35 millimeter 1.4 Voigtlander on there, which with this crop sensor is gonna be close to about a 50 millimeter uh, equivalent, which is sort of my favorite uh, range uh, for for portrait work and just work in general. And uh, it fit perfectly, it fits really nice. The mount is really great. The build quality overall on this camera is pretty pretty spectacular. It's not Leica level, but it's, it's definitely in that uh, sort of ballpark. You can see, I don't know how closely this lens will focus, but you can see some of the splits here. I don't know what the technical term for that is, but you know, you can, it's, it's definitely hard plastic or metal in most places, but, um, <clears throat> you know, I booted it up. Battery seems to last forever in this guy. And it is, uh, all leveraging, unfortunately not USB-C, but USB is sort of the the main cable connection and battery charger. Pretty interesting, it's got a nice little wheel on the back here. Sort of reminds me of the thumb wheel and Canon cameras. It's got a single sort of select slash menu button and power button. And then it's got one big uh, exposure button here on top along with the shutter button, that's it, aside from the manual aperture of the, the lens itself, the aperture ring. I mostly found myself keeping this in auto. And uh, once you turn the camera on and you pair it to the app, which was actually in beta when this thing launched, you have to install test flight and all sorts of stuff. It wasn't too, too difficult, but uh, once you get the app installed, it pairs over Bluetooth and then creates an ad hoc Wi-Fi network if you want uh, between the camera and your phone to transfer DNG files. So I'm not gonna get too much into the menus. They're pretty simplistic. You mostly just choose between ISO, white balance, metering, format, and then the frame lines. There's a lot of things you manually have to choose up front. There's actually not even a button to assign ISO right now. You have to go into the menu to change that. Once you get everything up and you're in auto, it basically works exactly as you would expect a rangefinder. You've got frame lines in here. It overlays what you see through the lens with what, what it sees through this tiny little um, secondary lens over here to the side, exactly like a rangefinder would. It functionally works really, really, really well. Uh, problem is it's a tiny little box and it's painfully slow to 
focus. It is very, very small. Not unlike some Leica things, but I think whatever the magnification is on this viewfinder, it is very tiny and very difficult to see if it's exactly in focus or not. But the other thing I was surprised to find is that it doesn't have any shutter curtain at all. I don't even know if this mic will pick that noise up. It makes the smallest, almost like the camera's just blinking type of noise. It is, it, something is physically clicking in there. It's not a sound effect. Or maybe it is a sound effect. I think it is a sound effect. I take that back now that I'm really paying attention. I think there's an internal speaker. <laughs> there it is, the buffer signal. So here's where the camera really starts to break down. When you finally get it in focus, that's fine. A lot of people like the slow, sort of principled and deliberate uh, aspect of shooting with a rangefinder. Very slow and time consuming to manually focus and all that stuff. Once you finally get everything aligned with your exposure and your focus, you finally take the picture. That's not a very satisfying sound. And the more I use it, the less I like it. I wish it would just be completely silent or have some way of just blacking out, but this is an optical viewfinder. So I don't really see how that's doable. At the end of the day, the actual files themselves seem to break down massively around like 600 ISO. Yeah, I would say right around actually 1250 was the setting where the ISO really started to break down. The buffering is painful. You can get like two, three, four, four images in before the buffer starts to just blink like crazy. Bring the entire camera to a screeching halt until the buffer gets filled, which I'm very surprised about because another unique uh, aspect of this camera is that it has completely internal memory. You know, it'd be nice if you had the option of an SD card, but it's just not there. So not only is this camera painfully slow to use, the, the files that it yields aren't that great. It's a cropped sensor. Uh, it's optically, you know, as good as a Leica lens or a Voigtlander in this case, but at the end of the day, it is just painful to use. At the very least, I think I would justify and be a little bit more excited to own this camera if it was a full frame sensor. But here's what's incredible. Here's why I'm keeping this camera, if nothing else, as just a signal, a show of support in this company existing and iterating on this product to the next thing. The actual experience of pulling up the app and reviewing your images is pretty fantastic. In fact, I would say it's near perfect. Other than the actual slow speed of when I decide I want to transfer a full DNG raw file, um, it's very fast. After the initial pairing, when I installed the app and turned the camera on, uh, I've never had to worry about it since. It's always just, as, as long as the camera's turned on, I open the app, the recent photos immediately start to populate. No question, no problem at all, which I absolutely, absolutely love. I'm so desperate for Canon to have something um, as fluid and frictionless as this experience. So you can see actually reviewing here all the images I just took sitting here. Um, I'll go back to some photos I took yesterday of Nessa right here. And so what it gives you initially is a really lightweight, quick, low-res JPEG file that you can review. Then if you want, you can add that to your um, you can download the high-res JPEG file to your app, and if you want, you can load uh, the DNG file, the high-res DNG file, in just a few moments. So let's see how long see how long it takes. So you do it gives you all your stats, which is really really nice. You hit sync button, and then you can hit it again. So that loads the high-res JPEG if you want to check focus a little bit closer and stuff like that. Then you can hit it again to load the DNG, and you can see here the timer is ticking. It takes about I don't know less than 10 seconds to load that high-res DNG file. You can. You know, if you want to do a bulk uh, transfer of a bunch of files, you can star things. It's just exactly how I want a modern camera to operate. Now, of course, I'd prefer and love to see this workflow in my uh, brand new Canon R6 or something like that. This idea, this presumption of a phone existing always is, I think, a fundamental shift to how camera makers absolutely need to do an about face and, and pivot to using uh, technology these days. One of the things I don't love about their software is that uh, it also presumes a different editor than I would like as the default. It presumes uh, something called Darkroom, and I really prefer Lightroom. So it's fine. Instead of hitting Edit Photo, if I hit it now, it'll jump me into Darkroom, which is a fine app, but not my main, not my main thing. Right now, what I have to do is go to Lightroom and then import the photo uh, from my camera roll, which is fine. Um, there it is. I can edit this as a full functioning raw DNG file. And to be honest, the, the actual like bokeh rendering and look of the files is pretty good uh, before the ISO starts to break down. It's not that bad. The colors are fine. And again, if you're shooting at base ISO, the camera operates fine, but this is a highly constrained camera compared to what else is out there from the likes of Leica or of course,
course, all the new mirrorless cameras, uh, which actually have autofocus and all sorts of other advantages. That doesn't change the fact that even though this is in many ways sort of the worst camera I've ever owned, it actually has me incredibly excited a bit about where Pixie is going. And if it truly is a very small company, like it appears to be when you go to their team section or whatever, um, I'm just simply excited that uh, it's possible that a company, you know, a startup company can manufacture a beautiful looking camera, has the big picture right. They just really have to iterate and get uh, the actual sensor quality and, and get the menu experience, the process of, of using the camera a little bit more ironed out. But it feels good and uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna hang on to this and try and shoot more of this instead of my Leica for a little while and see how it goes. Of course, I'm much more excited about a full frame camera. It is nowhere near worth the cost of admission. Uh, I think after US dollar conversion, this is actually closer to $4,000 for me in the US, which is absolutely insane. Cannot recommend anybody buy it unless you have the money and you just simply want to signal the belief and the investment in the idea of what this company is trying to do uh, behind the Pixie camera series. Um, so anyway, I hope you found this interesting. If anybody else has picked this up and tried it, I would love to hear your feedback about the experience. I haven't come across many reviews about it simply because it is so expensive and the inventory that they have on hand is pretty constrained due to COVID and everything. But as always, thank you so much for your attention and I'll be back soon. Bye.